Hello everyone, welcome back to my shop. Today I'm gonna to do my second episode in my Welding Basics uh, series of videos. I did call it Welding 101. That makes it sound like I'm some kind of welding professor and I am absolutely not, but I can kind of tell people, not kind of, I can teach people the basics a little bit. But anyway, we're gonna talk about how to set up your flux core welder today. This is the Yes Welder Flux 135. I did do a whole project with it and uh, already set it up, but I wanted to use it to go ahead and show people how to set up a flux core welder because uh, a lot of people are gonna be using this style of flux core welding machines or, you know, like my Century FC90. And then there's also my 40 Easy Weld 140MP. Those are all three different styles. I might show each of them uh, just briefly in the variations, but every machine's gonna look a little bit different, but they're pretty much gonna be set up exactly the same across the board. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your flap to access your wire drive mechanism and where your spool is gonna sit. I already have all my little parts off. You know, in this particular welder, there's a washer, a spring, a cap, and then a wing nut. So basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to take your wire spool. This is a two pound spool from Blue Demon. You're gonna to wanna to be really, really careful. You may already know that if you release the wire that it is going to want to bird nest on you or unspool really fast and just make a big giant mess. So on this welder in particular, the angle of my wire drive mechanism kind of sweeps down from the top. So I'm gonna insert my spool where the wire comes up over the top, release that, flip up my wheel. Hopefully you can see. It might even be easier to release some of the wire, stick it through this little feeder spring, then put the spool on. Once the wire is running through that spring, it might be a good time to put your cap and everything on which you will have to adjust a little bit later to get the right tension on the spool. I'm just gonna leave it nice and tight for now. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your drive roll is on the correct setting. So this is 30 thousandths wire or 030 wire. So you're gonna wanna take your knurled wire drive roll here. And I'm sure it's not in focus. You might be able to see the little knurlings there in the drive roll, maybe not. But basically, uh, if you're running flux core, you want those knurled, the knurled rolls, it, you know, because some of these drive rolls are gonna have a smooth end and that's for your solid core wire. And so basically, the other thing you wanna know is like this has an 8 tenth side and a 9 tenth side. So the 9 tenths is 35 thousandths wire or 035. And then the uh, 8 tenths side is for 30 thousandths wire or 030 wire. So since I'm running 030 wire here in the machine, I'm gonna put the 8 tenth side out so that that is what is pushing the wire along. Next, you're gonna to wanna to put your cap on because especially on this style, if you don't put the cap on now, you're not gonna get it on uh, later and you're gonna have to totally redo it. You're gonna have to pull the wire back out and then put the cap on. So I'm gonna push this wire through a little bit more to where it's almost running through the liner out to my gun. I'll try and give you a little bit better shot here, but basically I can see the liner to the MIG gun just poking out here a little bit. And so I'm trying to feed the wire and it's especially hard trying to work around this camera tripod and everything. But basically before you close the other wheel on top, you're gonna want to feed it into that liner. All right, I think I think I've just barely got it inside. We'll talk about uh, wire drive tension in just a minute. I want to get this wire pulled through. So out here on your flux core or MIG or wire feed lead or gun or whatever you prefer to call it, you're gonna wanna take out your contact tip and your contact tip cover. And then you're gonna wanna just pull it out straight. What's probably best is to turn your wire feed speed all the way up, pull your whole lead out straight and run the wire through it. And that is until it sticks out the end of the gun here like this. Then you'll put your contact tip back on. I apologize for the camera being out of focus. And then your contact tip cover. So back here at the machine, you don't want your spool tension to be too tight because you don't want to have to make the wire drive mechanism work harder than it has to. So one way to know if it's too loose is if your spool's just wanting to unspool on you. Now this, there's a lot of friction on this spool rod, the little plastic rod that the spool sits on. I can see where from the welding I've done in the past, it uh, rubs a lot. So I don't know that I'm gonna have that issue on this, 
but you definitely just don't want your spool to be too tight or too loose. If it's too loose, it'll just come and unspool on you if it's too tight then you're just gonna make your wire drive mechanism work too much. So uh, just put it on there just tight enough to where it doesn't wanna unspool on you. That's about just right. That I don't think that I can even really get there with this machine. Um, so I just try to uh, leave it pretty loose. So now probably one of the more critical things is getting your wire tension correct. If you don't tension your wire here in the wire drive mechanism correctly, then you can, I, I guess you can damage the integrity of the wire. If it's too loose, obviously it's not gonna feed. So you wanna get it just right. Basically what works for me is I just turn my machine on and I use my wood table. Let's get it uh, all the way loose to where it's not gonna come apart but uh, yeah, it's about right there. So you'll wanna get it to where it's pretty loose and then you'll want to turn on the machine and run your wire into the table at an angle to where if the tension is just right, it can start to swirl up and uh, instead of like running into the table where it just wants to start or completely stop, it'll start spooling up. So that seems too loose. I'm gonna tighten it a fair amount. Same thing. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna do this on a metal table, or if you are, you're at least gonna want to remove your ground clamp so you don't start welding. I would say that angle is probably like a 45 degree angle. See, that started to feed, but I still think it's just a little bit too loose. You want a tighter curl than that. I probably have my wire feed speed up a little too fast too. So, I mean, you can really change your curl depending on your angle, but at a nice 45 degree angle, you'll get a nice little swirl out of there. And with plenty of tension there on the table, as long as it can still push it through, it's pretty good, I think. Deciding how you're gonna tension your wire drive mechanism, I'm sure that this could be kind of a, controversial topic. I'm sure other people have different methods. When I first started, I basically used to just stick my fingers and I would just put a fair amount of tension on it. And as long as it could push it out of my fingers, then it was enough. But you know, I needed to be able to clamp down on my fingers a little bit tighter and uh, have it stop. And that was about right where I knew where it should be. Really, you just want to find a good sweet spot. You'll be able to kind of figure it out, especially as you get more used to welding and have changed out your wire spools a few times. You'll be able to feel where it's kind of just right and it's, it's not too tight or, or too loose. Be careful using your finger method though because you could send that wire through your fingers. That has happened to my younger brother before. Another tip of something you might wanna check is you can kinda of see how this is kinda of twisted up here. You're gonna to wanna to pull out your gun and kinda of untwist it whatever way uh, feels right and get it in a good place where you can feel like there's not too much tension Otherwise, you're gonna make that wire drive mechanism work really hard So that's one thing to note from there The next most important thing is before you get welding is making sure your polarity is correct So this is specifically a video for flux core mega is very very similar um, Basically, you just don't have to worry as much about the wire drive mechanism And then there's this part where you need to make sure that your polarity is correct so this is a flux core only machine. Like it is not set up to run a gas shielded MIG. And so I don't have to worry about it. It's set in one polarity. And I mean, maybe I could change it, but it'd be stupid to change it. It's gonna come correct. At least hopefully I kind of think my titanium that I bought not that long ago came in correct, but that's uh, neither here nor there. So let's move over to my Forney Easy Weld uh, 140 MP. It's a multi-process welder that we're going to, I'm gonna show you how to make sure that your polarity is set correctly if you are uh, welding with a machine where you can change the polarity. So hopefully this view is okay, but basically what we've got here is the Forney Easy Weld 140 MP, as I have already said, and we got some DINS plugs. So hopefully you have a machine at least that comes with some DINS plugs. If not, maybe you have to change uh, some cables inside the machine. I can't help you there because I have no machine where you change the polarity inside the machine itself, but I do have this with the DINS plugs. So basically, uh, if you've got one with the DINS plugs, this is the polarity selector plug for what comes out of my lead. So this goes inside the machine and then it heads to my electrode where the wire comes out. With flux core, you're gonna run 
straight polarity or DC electrode negative. So you're gonna want your MIG gun here, your flux core welding lead to be negative. And the reason for that is because it puts 25% of the heat into your wire. Your wire is extra thin because it has that inner flux core compared to the solid core. Solid core is gonna be the reverse polarity. So now this is my ground DINs plug. I know you can't see it. It runs around the, uh, the cart here and goes to the ground. The ground is gonna be positive. That's putting 75% of your heat into your base metal. And so now you'd be set up correctly. That is the correct polarity for welding flux core. If your machine comes with the ability to change polarity. And that's probably gonna be most machines that are set up to run MIG or flux core, uh, your gas shielded MIG or flux core. So thanks to everybody that voted on my poll on my next uh, welding basics video. Uh, I really appreciate everybody that participated in that to let me know what you want to watch i'd like to uh utilize that feature that youtube has a little bit more so i know what people want sometimes i just don't have a lot of choice and i just kind of create content on what i'm doing at the time or what i feel like making content on at the time but for stuff like this it worked perfect and i want to thank everyone for using that that did uh hopefully even if you are a mildly seasoned beginner welder or whatever you found some uh, useful information in this video so thanks a lot for watching i really appreciate it and uh, if you'll give me the thumbs up, I'd really appreciate that as well. And then if you came across this video on your way through YouTube, uh, go down and click that subscribe button for me. I'd really appreciate that as well. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you in the next video.